And I will also share my screen so that you can see the agenda. I'll make it narrower so it's easier to read on laptops. Thank you. When we last met, we were working on a new metric called defect resolution. And by the way, Sophia sends her apologies. She's driving today. Uh, and that was, that was kind of where we ended up and kind of putting off metrics reviews until we, other than the one that Vinod was going to help us change the name of. So um, defect resolution time was the one we were working on. I think we might want to either just spend a little bit of time working on that right now or see if there's an additional metric we want to try to add prior to the next release. That was my requesting people's thoughts on the matter. The agenda looks fine. Let's just go dive in. Okay. All right. So we'll just dive right in to issue resolution time. I know we had a good deal of, okay, I understand Google's new security settings changes. Um, I have to make this a little wider. And I don't know why that's there. All right. Is that visible for everybody easily on your screen? Mm hmm Okay, so I suggest um, we just read through it because and and see where our our questions are. Maybe just spend a little time editing it. I had them put prism in my glasses and it's the perfect distance for my home computer and I have to figure out the perfect distance on my laptop at work. That's why my head's bobbing back and forth. Uh, so how are we going to deal with the case of I easily handle defects by rejecting all proposals and just not doing ever fixing anything. Which is, I think, one of my concerns on this. Well, I'd say you'd get a defect resolution time of never or some extraordinarily long period of time no, and I think you get it effective you get you get zero divide by zero effectively yeah you get you get a, yeah all of them are accepted yeah, all the results immediately correct me if I'm wrong but divide by zero would result in a non-real number it's actually undefined if you really want to go into this stuff and I, I am I beware uh, <laughs> when, when, when David formal, dropped that formal math, yeah everybody needs a hobby one of mine is formal mathematics <laughs> I apparently need a better hobby um so yeah. I need to have you guest lecture in my string algorithms class oh well we'll talk about that later you're going to pay me better <laughs> all right um no, this is the this is very much the dancing on the head of uh, what kind. Let's talk about different kinds of infinities, kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, do we accept the axiom of choice today? Um, all right. So anyway, getting back to the the main point, though. Um, yeah. So it seems like you know the overall is measured the median time between the accepting. Uh, the the one thing is, what do we do about you know, the, the ones that don't ever get through. I, I don't know. I, I don't have a good answer for this. this. is why I'm asking the question. It's one I'm worried about. And maybe maybe this is an excessive concern. You just measure it and acknowledge that no metric is perfect. Well, the way okay. I might the, the way I might explain that to my software engineering students is I would use use case language and I would say that that's a failed end state. Okay, so don't bother to try to capture that within this metric. Just this is a metric, and be aware that um, 
you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just a note then that note that a project could choose to just never accept a defect report. Yeah, right now it just says accepts and then, uh, you know, when it emerges uh, and they could be making yeah. it. what I was trying to go after. Yeah, I, you know what? I think that's actually the wrong time between the re the report of a defect, not the accepted report, the report of a defect. What I meant when I was saying accepted was that it was received. And yeah, well, so maybe we should say the receipt of a report of a defect. I received, you mean it, it went through some triage process with the maintainers and no, was, no, have... just it was in, in other words, whining within your org does not count. Sending a report to the re organization that develops the software counts. So I would say when the issue has, if it's on GitHub, for example, when someone pushes the button that sends the issue to the project. That's the start because whining about it within the user community doesn't count. It's got to actually have been sent because otherwise, I mean, <laughs> people whine everywhere. It's got to actually have been sent to the supplier who can do something about it. So maybe we should just say the meeting time between the report of a defect to the project. I don't think we need the word accepted. I may have even been the one who suggested that word. Yeah, I thinking, take the word accept. I take the word accepted out. Yeah, yeah, but I think that's actually causing more problems. You know, if you report of a defect to the project using the project's defect reporting mechanism, uh, where's the URL here? Yeah. Just a second, I see it. That's what How about the uh, adjustment oh, I just put in? I just deleted the, your, your accept since you said you would want. What does it mean to <laughs> report of a defect to the project using the project's defect reporting mechanism and the time where the project resolves the defect? I used the term resolve. So resolution could be accepts and make available to its users or explicitly chooses not to address, reject. Something like that. Second, I am, I am on my way towards this document. <laughs> Is that actually a failed case, Sean? Well, um, so I think the fact oh, that the wait. defect never gets resolved is a failed case. And I think it's up to the group oh, using okay. the software to determine the impact of that okay. failed, maybe failed is too, um, valence to word. Um, maybe it's an alternate end case. Now we've got a, oh, sorry, go ahead. I think the problem is made available to its users also. I mean, it doesn't have to be through a, a formal release, right? Just somehow it's possible right, okay. to get to it. I knew we had discussion of this last time and I couldn't recall it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right. So I want to add that as, uh, to a note um, uh, near the, uh, after some of these other notes. Note. May, um, a defect repair can be made by, by through a formal release, release, or simply by publicly posting the source code change necessary. Many, um, many defects only affect specific users. Are, are only significant. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say that's a function of the size and scope of the software, right? You know, so yeah. I can see where uh, there might be Zephyr defects that only affect people using certain hardware. 
I don't know if that's a thing that happens, Kate, or not. But I tried to find an example other than Kubernetes. <laughs> okay. I would say well, it's probably in its in its main line. Maybe it's just in its mm. in its main branch. Oh, it, it, this seems to be in. Yeah. I don't know if we want to go into the main branch aspect. I think making it available to the users is sufficient. Yeah. Well, because because th there's a lot of patches that clearly won't work, or won't ever get merged in. I hate to fix. Well, to... no. So, so the question here is, you're you're presupposing that there's going to be a fix, and this is a resolution. It's ah, not okay. a defect fix time. It's a defect resolution time. So a re a, res a valid resolution in my mind from that is it could be we could be rejecting and choosing not to address it as a project. The thing is, leaving it in the ambiguous state is a fail case. We just sort of sits there and lingers on forever and ever and ever. By how is this? By accepting it, by rejecting it, or by by rejecting it, or by accepting a fix in its main branch? Would that help? No, I don't. Like I say, I don't think it's. I don't think it's a. a read my words there. <laughs> I thought I was being. Uh, uh, what words? I'm. I'm. I'm uh, Sean's moved down beyond it, so that's why you're confused. You need to be in the document. <laughs> I am in the document. Where in the document? Yeah, well, I, I was trying to sort of put some detail behind the discussion that you're having down under the objectives. Right, and but I think that's I, what it belongs, I, but yeah, it's sort of where the project but, but, resolves the defect, period. Okay. And, and, and then I, said, note, the resolution could be to accept and make it available to users or explicitly choose to not address reject. So the what was put in brackets behind there, I think, is redundant. The first part is redundant with the note. So I thought we were going to do it as a note. So I think because I think there's defects that represent some kind of security or vulnerability threat, but there are also defects that may pertain to performance or addressing specific formats of data that the project chooses not to address. Mm -hmm. So it's a defect from the perspective of the reporter, but the the decision, like if a decision not to address it causes no harm, then it's re it, it seems reasonable. I think, I don't know if we need to delineate or want to go down the rabbit hole of trying to delineate between not resolving software yeah. vulnerability defects. Probably not. Bugs are bugs, bugs are bugs. But like I say, I think it's a, it's important to understand resolution. It does not equal equal fixing. Gotcha. So, okay. Too. So so I've tweaked number one here, mm -hmm. and and the the yes. Well, number th I think that one actually number the new number three is actually already covered. I think in the text we just added earlier. Is that? I concur. Someone want to go through and accept all the changes so we can see it as one whole thing and then do another pass visually? See it holds together still? Yeah. Oh, somebody already is like checking boxes like crazy. I'll work from the bottom up then. <laughs> checking boxes. Okay, add it again. I think we're almost there. Yeah, you can always tell because the width recenters itself when all of the defects or all the edits are resolved. Should we have a, a note about the uh, the issue that you know, if you never if a project just rejects everything, uh, the, this this metric will not be perhaps what you were hoping. I guess a pro a, a project. How often have you may, seen that in practice? May appear to have a rapid response time by rapidly rejecting all <laughs> defect reports as if they are not defect reports. <laughs> Is there a way to track that uh, rejection? maybe in the future factor that into this resolution time if they have a lot of rejects and that 
we can flag that in some way. The problem uh, of this practice, the, the problem is, of course, um, there are there are I, I see this in some of the uh, supply chain stuff, like with Amazon, where people create garbage, um, you know, comments. So just because somebody gives a comment doesn't make it mean it's true. <laughs> Just because somebody makes a, like when somebody files an issue, it doesn't make it true. Yeah, that, it's not right. working for me. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, in addition, uh, malicious commenters can create a large number of spurious uh, defect reports uh those situation uh, um those situations yeah so you so basically there are ways to gain this on both sides Yeah, if everybody played nice and did what they're supposed to, there's no problems. <laughs> so I don't have a simple way to solve these problems, but at least we acknowledge them. So when it comes to measuring, God, I think that these glasses really do not work at this distance at all. <laughs> um conditions well, i i just um somebody just made a change in point three and i do not understand this grammar uh, recognizable what, what is this okay so as, oh, as as if they are not defects yeah as a project may appear to have rapid response time by rapidly rejecting all defects reports as if they are not defects okay all right yeah. I, I didn't understand the recognize i mean okay the, re the redundancy of defect reports being recognized as defect reports was troubling the, inst the installation of Grammarly that is now in my browser. Oh. I have to learn, I have to ignore Grammarly very much, but okay. sometimes yeah, it helps you... me not sound illiterate. Yes, uh, uh, but I, I would say uh, listen, but do not slavishly obey because uh, I, yeah. not, I never want to be part of the elongated yellow fruit school. Are you familiar with that school? I'm not. No, uh, it's the school that says you can't use the word banana twice. So the second time it's an elongated yellow fruit. And I'm a well, the whole thought that banana, it's... banana, 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 would not work then. That's right. That's right. So uh, I'm a believer that if you're talking about a banana, you can use the word banana twice or even three times in the same sentence. It's allowed. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. They aren't, well, re technically reports aren't the defects, as if the reports do not describe defects. Right. Since technically the report is not really the defect. Reports, it's like the reports don't describe defects that are recognized by the maintainers as defects. So, yeah, maybe I don't think we need to go through that. Just. Okay. You know, they're just rapidly re re they reject all the defect reports as if the reports do not describe defects. I think gets the point. Does that really happen? Like just oh yeah. Reflect really. Absolutely. You know, hey, if you want to make your metrics, I, I have seen more than once the there are if you have metrics, th then you game them. This is the problem with metrics. Yeah. You often get what you measure, not what you wanted. Yeah. I'm stupid. I just I'm honest. Some issues are open because I want to remember to go back to them when we have time. Mm -hmm. And some, some pull requests most, are open because I can't resolve the conflicts easily. I think most time. folks want to be honest, but the problem is when you start getting paid, whether or not certain things happen, 
than the quality. Not a problem I've encountered. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's terrible things can happen. How's this? Can I say it? Can I leave it there? <laughs> yeah, let's leave it there. All right. In addition, I mean, malicious it, reporters it, can create. Yeah, so basically, I, I think this is good because we're acknowledging that certain bad practices can happen uh, and just warning users, of uh, uh, metrics users. How about we outlaw, uh, like, uh, filter the outliers? Like, the, as uh, Sean mentioned, he keeps the bugs open for a time being so that they can be resolved later. Right. I think median helps with that. If we want to yes. talk about that, um, you know, there, um, maybe we should, I, that, that is a fair point. Uh, there I are did, often I outliers. List, I did listen to, I did list under objectives that you would want to look at various statistical measures I included mean median but there are others um all right well maybe we should talk about it there um but i i think i, I think the point you raised about the outliers is actually sensible um i, I i'm happy to put it in there the objectives um, i'm trying to, i think it's I, I, I don't know i think it is more of an objective or maybe it's a way of an implementation but I think I think if I'm using a defect resolution time, I'm using it two ways. One to understand how a particular project resolves defects, how quickly. But then also I want to understand within my portfolio, whatever the scope of that is, which of the projects are quickly resolving defects and which of them aren't. So there's I think an individual project maintainer or contributor view and a like an OSPO view or a foundation view or an enterprise view of some other kind um, that really only, this is really most important to them in an aggregate form. Like they're not going to look through 11,000 projects to see the defect resolution time. They're going to want to look for the outliers. Yeah. Or even like sometimes I read a paper theory of open superposition when where you deliberately delay the bugs so that a certain work needs to be done, then it will get resolved. Like you delay it so that other other modules are developed or fixed, then you go to the bug specifically. That's that's the case where you have a very large pull request that fixes the defect, but there are reasons that you can't close that pull request because it affects all these other things. Yep. Are there any are there other alternate end cases just other than a project determining that they, they don't want to resolve or that the defect does not need to be resolved? Um, I don't think we want to call out metrics gaming in the definition of a metric. But maybe I'm I, I, th I think we should. I, I think that the reality is that metrics can be gamed. And I think it's I mean, I don't care where it is, but I think we should acknowledge it somewhere as an issue and and <coughs> users to look at that. I think that's entirely appropriate. Now, I don't care if it's under objectives. I'm not sure it's an objective. I just put it there because that's where you put well, the discussion maybe... of obedience. We can I know move this around. Gaming. You can put it yeah. under notes. Yeah, probably just to be in the notes at the bottom. Like that. So both the like just the whole alternate end case section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. Is there a notes? Notes. There's a notes about. It'd be a new section, maybe. It's really not an implementation note. It's really a note about practice. Uh, 
Is that the right considerations? Metrics might be skewed if project does these sorts of things. Not quite a risk. Um, yeah. Once it's used maliciously. Maybe it's defect resolution tied to a code change or pull request is a filter and defect um, I don't know if that uh, if that is getting at. I was looking to try to put the text in a place where we had a place for it, and there really isn't a notes. Well, we put notes at the top, right underneath uh, the underneath the description. Note one, two, three. Oh yeah, very good. Copy, cut, paste. <laughs> yeah. I was right confused. Ahead. Okay. I'm now confused for different reasons. <laughs> I think it was me not quite sure where to put it but, and failing to recognize the note section at the top. I mean, it's perfect. I don't think anybody will be shocked that a description section has notes. <laughs> Notes one, two, three. That seems perfectly reasonable. All right. Um, hmm. I can certainly take an action item to put a visualization of this in. I think it's fair to say that uh, Grimoire Lab and uh, you can calculate this with either Grimoire Lab or Augur. Mm -hmm. um, mm. um, and then there is the the filter. This this special this. 
note about labels in GitHub, which I think I think that's a filter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I consider it that way. It's not part of the you know. It's yeah. a way of classifying I, issues or issues. Yeah, I do feel bad about not at least mentioning some other of these issue tracking systems. I put GitHub, GitLab, Bugzilla. Yeah, but if like if we talk about like labels in GitHub, then we should mention that you can do yeah. some things that other. I'm doing it with. I put labels in GitHub, GitLab, Bugzilla, or any other uh, issue tracking. Let's see here. Good old SourceForge. Let's see. That indicates the issue represents a software defect. Is it presumptive? I guess it's not. I was I answered my own question. I was thinking if if it's connected to a pull request, for example, in GitHub, is it presumptively a, a defect? But no, in fact, issues get added with pull requests at the same time in the same way. <clears throat> I think the, this point in the filter and the one above it both are same. Like maybe they can be merged. Any issue that is labeled as a defect or labeled in the GitHub or any issues indicates that. Issue. Oh, any issues labeled as a defect. Yeah. But by, um, by the way, just I, I just yanked up um good old SourceForge, which has been around forever. They have tickets. Yeah. The, they call them tickets, and bugs oh. are a different ticket than support requests, patches, or feature requests. So, so is it each... a synonym? I'm sorry? Is it a synonym of the defect ticket? Sy in... OK, a ticket is a synonym for a GitHub issue. OK. Sort of, except that pull requests are patches, and they're also tickets. But the, my point, though, is that for the point of a defect report, a bug ticket is what we're talking about. And let's look up Bugzilla. So, so some of these tools have this built in. It's uh, GitHub issues, I think, is actually one of the weird ones. Most of these tools have a built in mechanism to differentiate between bug reports and feature requests. And, and you know, I get how. You know, I GitHub doesn't because people were terrible at making appropriate classifications. I, I, you, well, you know what? I, <laughs> I think you, I, I think you can, but you can handle that by having a single issue trick system and then you toggle that field. But the fact right. that there is no field means that it's harder to do the very analysis we are trying to handle. Right. We have to use ultimately some bag of words. We have to use a bag of words, and more importantly, there's nothing built in that enforces a particular way, which makes it hard. And well, bag of right. words and bag of words often doesn't work because if nobody, if just the humans know the difference, but they don't mark it, you know, great. We have to bring up a machine learning, you know, you know, anal you know, textual analysis tool to do our best. Good luck. I mean, I bet this is probably not bad in terms of machine I think, I think it's where yeah I think it's a case for usability one out over perfection hey, I'm I'm actually dubious about that it just that's what they chose to do I'm not sure anybody thought that hard about it uh it's because <laughs> it's not clear if I'm a if I'm a developer I'm going to want to filter out the bug reports versus the um feature requests seriously so I'm not even convinced it's an ease of use issue. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> One, okay. um, yeah, this is okay. So data collection strategies, um, effectively. Yeah, so maybe it's a ma many tools build this in. Some don't.
Okay, I think we are at time. Yes, we, yeah. well, we have five more minutes, technically, yeah. I think, but I'm good with, I think we've, I think what's missing are the visualizations and some hard pointers to the software implementations. And I can take that as an action item for, for our next meeting. So, Sean, what is at the very end? Uh, uh, I think that's in? just a templated guidance about the, the, um, the document formatting. I don't think we keep it in the template here. We, no. It's a, a checklist in the when we create an issue or submit a PR or something. Yeah. I don't want to remove it till we're ready to release it, though, because then I won't be able to find it. Ah, OK. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm like, um, no, it's not a part of the template or something. <laughs> right. It's just more like instructions. Yeah. Um, I'm just making a note to get the visualizations and then get the. Or, or if you want, just put the visualization and uh, notify me, then I can create a PR and every, everything for the entire process. Yeah. I mean, what I was going to do is just grab one from Grimoire Lab and grab one from Augur um, and point people to the specific places in each tool where, where one can find this information. Awesome. So, we got uh, a metric done. I think that's great. We didn't yep. debate the nature or meaning of the word defect for 45 minutes. So huge win. <laughs> An opportunity for another time. I have a yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you're with us, David, I know we have that chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, through the heart. <laughs> it comes from the heart, David. Oh, it comes from the heart. Yeah, right into mine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. I'm I have one curious. thing to discuss, uh, David. Like, uh, uh, we are changing the name from uh, CII badging to uh, OSSF best. Open practices. SSF, yes. Yeah. That's so right. So the image is old in the uh, previous metric. Is uh, is that image is still valid or not? The te the badge itself that would go okay. on the project. Ah, uh, funny you should ask. Um, there's actually an issue. We have uh, some draft logos. Yeah, um, so I, I was waiting whether we need to, like, uh, since the release is not ready yet, so once the image is finalized, I can then take the entire thing. I, I, I would say change the name now. The logo okay. change is a separate step, but the name is already done. So anytime okay. you use text, say the text. Now, you're okay. right. There's going to be a new logo um you'll be shocked to know that people argue about logos uh story at 11. um i mean it, there's it's all good it's all good but um okay. frankly that I, I have many other things that are going on in my life and i'm so i'm not rushing on that one we okay. we know it's going to need to be done it's okay if it gets pushed off a little bit so <laughs> the, the time okay. that was spent identifying the auger logo blew my mind i'm like oh yeah pick a logo but I had creatives on the team and they, they had to give it so much thought. All right. I, I, I will quickly for your amusement, if you want, I, I, I'll just, if you want, there is, um, there is a uh, URL specifically on the, on the issue of the logo. If you 